that me and my husband are sitting at the bar at this restaurant in LA and I'm not even drinking alcohol or anything. I had a Coke and um, I ordered a Coke and um, some ravioli and we're sitting there at the bar in the restaurant and all of a sudden I get this overwhelming feeling that I'm in hell. And <laughs> this is a really hard experience for me to explain to somebody because it's just something that I felt and it's something that I knew. It was, um, it wasn't like spoken to me. It wasn't anything audible. It was just something that my mind automatically knew. So I knew that I was hell and I knew that the feeling that I was feeling was eternal. So I knew that I was eternity and it was just a feeling that I knew that the condition that I felt would never change. Okay. Like never, ever, 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 ever. And that was the really scary part about it because you knew that that horrible feeling that you were feeling would never go away. There was no rest. There was no cure. It was just, you were going to feel like that forever and ever and ever. You wouldn't even be able to die. You would just keep feeling that forever. And the feeling that I felt was eternal separation from God. And it was just something that I knew. Okay. It was just something that God showed me. He showed me that he was gone. He was completely out of the picture. Um, that there was just like, a gulf separating us and I could no longer um, have the benefits of having God there anymore and so what he showed me was that God is everything God is love okay he's just a being of love of light of happiness every good thing comes from God any feeling of happiness peace hope joy um, comfort love everything good comes from God and God is not able to be in the presence of sin, period. He just can't be. Like, it's, it's just an impossibility. So when you die without Jesus and you go to hell, you're basically just going to a place where God doesn't exist anymore. And that place is full of sorrow, pain, agony, depression, no rest, um, no comfort, no love, nothing. I mean, you take your worst day here on earth and magnify every bad feeling that you've ever felt here, magnify it times like 500 billion. That's what hell is. It's absolute mental anguish. It's mental torment. Um, it's really hard to describe, but it's something that, I mean, you, can, you feel like you can't bear it. You feel like you can't even go one more second feeling like that. It's just horrible. I, I wouldn't wish hell on my worst enemy. I honestly don't believe that anybody deserves that to go there. It's, it's miserable. It's complete and total mental torment, mental anguish. You just know, and you know, when you're there, like you remember your life on earth and you remember all the people that tried to tell you about Jesus and about salvation. And I remember my pastors and my Sunday school teachers, and I remember them telling me all these things and I wanted so bad to go back to earth and you can ask my husband because I thought that I had died and I was telling him how do we die I don't remember us dying I said oh my god we're in hell we're in hell like we have died and gone to hell I remember looking over at my husband and this is somebody who I, I love more than anything in the world but love didn't exist he was just like this lifeless soul sitting next to me that could do nothing for me. His words didn't comfort me. I didn't even feel any love for him because love didn't exist anymore. It was just horrible. And, and you knew that like you couldn't even go to sleep. Like, you know, every comfort that you even have that you, that you forget about, you know, just like a drink of water, um, laying down on your comfortable bed on your pillow at night, warm water, just like any type of good, comforting feeling any type of love any type of goodness that we have here on this earth is in hell when you die without Jesus it's all gone because God is the one who provides all the goodness God truly is just this being of love and goodness and light and that's what he taught me whenever I had that vision when I had that experience and you know, luckily I came out of it. You know, I went to sleep that night and the next morning I woke up and I was like, oh, thank you God that I'm back on earth. And I just felt so empowered. Like I have a second chance, you know, like I didn't die. God didn't let me die without him. 
and he pulled me out of this and you know I was scared and I tried to laugh it off you know I tried to say oh it was the marijuana it was the drugs you know maybe something was wrong maybe it was laced with LSD you know maybe something crazy happened but I could not shake that experience it was more real to me than anything that I've even felt here on earth like you know the day my daughter was born one of the greatest days of my life that hell experience that I had it was even more real than that like it is burned inside of my memory I will never ever ever forget it and you know I don't like talking about hell I think that it's scary and that experience did scare me for a couple weeks after that I was just I was scared of God almost I was like oh my god like what do I need to do I mean I gotta get everything in my life right I gotta be perfect I gotta do this I gotta do that and I just started panicking and Satan he was inside my mind trying to lie to me like oh look at what look how mean God is you know like he's gonna send you there can you believe that now you're like under a dictatorship and you just got to do everything that he tells you to do and you know like I just started panicking and I just started praying I was like God I need to know who you are I need to know what you want me to do and God just began to like envelop me in love. He didn't condemn me. He didn't tell me I was dirty and nasty and bad. He said, I've been waiting for you to come back. You know, like I gave this to you so you will know what life is like without me. I didn't give you this experience to scare you. I gave you this experience to show you how much I love you. I gave you this experience to show you what Jesus died to save everybody. I'm sorry I'm getting kind of emotional but it's like when you really truly grasp what Jesus did like he saved us all he saved us from that we don't have to live this way we don't have to be broken we don't have to be miserable and I just began to ask God to show me who you are like what do you want me to do what do you want from me and he began to say I love you I want you to have a good life I want you to read the Bible, I want you to seek me, I want you to find me, I want you to follow me, I want you to know that I am love, that I am not this mean God that's standing above you, pointing my finger in your face, telling you that you're not good enough, telling you that you can never be enough. I am the God that is telling you that I died, to, I sent my son to die to save you from your, from your sins. If you accept Jesus as your savior, you are washed clean. You are able to be in my presence. I am able to live in you and do things through you. And you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to just automatically become this star Christian. You don't automatically have to just do everything right. When you follow me and you love me and you start seeking me and reading my word, the words on the page of the Bible are gonna speak to you. They're gonna come alive. They're gonna show you what you need to do. I'm going to do these things through you. I'm going to do it. You're not going to do it. You can't do it for yourself. You can't be enough. You can't be good enough. And I've always thought before that like, I had to just, you know, be amazing or God couldn't love me. But God is saying, you, there's nothing you can do. Like there aren't works that you can do. There aren't things that you can do to make me love you. I'm never gonna love you any more or any less. I love you unconditionally, no matter what you do, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done in your past. And I am here to tell you that life is great. Life is beautiful. Life is about love. It's about finding me and it's about helping other people, encouraging other people, loving other people. And you know, after that experience, I just began to seek God and I just had this fire welling up within me. And I'm telling you, I never sat down and read my Bible before. And all of a sudden, I'm a stay-at-home mom, so I have a lot of time on my hands. I started reading the Bible hours a day. I'm talking, going on the internet, searching sermons, searching everything, praying hours every single day. And God just began to like open up my mind and open up my heart and transform me. I I'm telling you that not even one circumstance in my life has changed. Like I'm still a stay-at-home mom. I'm I don't nothing has happened amazing for me or my family you know what I mean like but I am changed like I'm happy I have so much joy and peace every single day and I love getting into the word and I love reading God's promises and it's like the Bible is like this treasure trove of goodness like people are always looking for something to make them happy like you know money or fame or a boyfriend or a 
child or whatever it is that they think that they don't have and they have everything right there in the Bible, in the Word of God, and God is good. And the more that I get to know Him, the more that I know how good He is. And He just shows me things and He teaches me things and He loves me. And I just want everyone to know who God truly is because there are a lot of Christians out there and I am so sorry because I have been hurt by them too. Christians who, you know, they judge everybody and they think that, you know, they're somehow higher than people who don't do exactly what they're supposed to do, but we all fall short, every single one of us, every single one of us. There are so many judgmental people out there, they hurt you, they try to tell you that you're not enough or you can't be enough, and I am here to tell you that God loves every single person on this earth the exact same. He is not a respecter of persons, he shows no favoritism, all he is asking is for you to come to him, for you to trust him, for you to believe that what Jesus did for you. God sent his only son, Jesus, into this world. He was here in the flesh. He performed miracles while he was here. He loved people while he was here. He had compassion on people while he was here. And he died to save us from hell. When we accept Jesus as our savior, the blood of Jesus washes us clean, so we are able to be before God as blameless, white as snow. We're righteous in Him. We are. We become what we're supposed to be through Him. He sends His Holy Spirit to live within us, to help us, to guide us, to make us who He meant for us to be. We can't be good on our own. We can't just wake up one day and say, yeah, I'm just gonna stop you know, having sex outside of marriage. I'm gonna stop being an alcoholic and I'm going to stop doing this and I'm going to stop doing that. Like you can't just do all that on your own. You need Jesus to help you become who you need to be. And it's not a condemning, you know, God didn't come into the world to condemn it. He came to save it. He came to say, look, you can't do this on your own. I died for you. I already did all the work and I just want you to accept it. Just accept me Ask me to be your Lord and Savior, and I am going to blow you away. I'm going to transform you. I'm going to give you peace. I'm going to give you joy. I'm going to give you love for other people. I'm going to overwhelm you with so much love that it's going to burst out of you and spill out of you onto other people. You're not going to even be able to contain the amount of happiness and joy that I'm going to give you. You're going to be able to be happy through any situation. I'm going to be there with you through everything, just trust in me. And the more that I dig into God's word and like truly study the Bible and read all these promises, they're amazing. I mean, it's like I've learned so much that God is there 24 hours, seven days a week. We have to just seek him and follow him and love him and pray and get into our Bible. It's honestly following Jesus. It's the only thing that matters in life. Everything else is not going to bring you joy. It's not going to bring you peace. It's not going to bring you anything. And then God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. You know what that means, guys? That means the desires of your heart. That means the things that you want and you know that you're supposed to do deep down inside, like all your dreams, all your hopes. If you put God first, if you die to yourself, if you give everything to God and really just try to know his heart and become more like him, he will do it through you and he will give you the desires of your heart. He will, he has done it for me. He has just transformed me and changed me. And I know that my purpose is bigger and greater than just being a stay at home mom and changing diapers and making meals and cleaning all day. I am here to help people and encourage people and to show them that the love of Christ can change your life, you guys. God is so big. He is so supernatural. He can do anything. And I think that I just needed this boost in my faith because I didn't see God as a supernatural God. I thought that all the miracles were like for the old Bible days. But God is saying, read my word. See, I am doing a new thing. Like, I can use you. I believe that God wants to do awesome things. The Bible says that signs will follow the people who believe, miracles, supernatural things. And I am a firm believer that everything is just changing in my life for the better. And, and God hears our prayers, you guys. The word says that the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. 
So what does it mean to be righteous? It doesn't mean that you have to be perfect. It means that you invite Jesus to be your savior. That makes you righteous. So if you have Jesus in your life and you pray and you believe and you have faith, it's just amazing. Like I just, it's, I just want people to know how good God is. Get into his word, accept him as your savior and your life will change. I'm telling you, the worst of the worst situations he can turn around. He can weave beauty out of the most horrific situation. I don't care what you've done in your past. I don't care who you are. I don't care how disgusting you think you are, how bad you think your life is. God can and will turn it around. He can put a new song in your heart. He can bring you alive. He literally just takes the deadness out of you and makes you alive. He makes you live again. I am just so excited to share this with people because I didn't really understand this before. I didn't know who the true God was. I thought he hated me. I thought I wasn't enough. And what I'm learning is that God loves you. Oh my God, he loves you so much. He loves you so unconditionally. He is just waiting for you to turn around and come to him and say, God, I need you. I need your help. And he will help you. I promise you. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing that I've ever done with my life. It's the best decision that I've ever made. It's changing my life. I know that great things are going to happen in my life. I'm going to help people. I'm going to do great things for the kingdom of God. I know my purpose now. Um, and I'm just so happy. You guys, I was dead inside. I was so miserable. I was so depressed. I literally did not think that I could ever be happy again. And like I'm telling you, not even one circumstance in my life has changed. And I'm full of so much joy.